Welcome back to Comics Choice and my guest tonight, Joe Brandt. <laughs> OK, so now you're, the next category is the outstanding contribution to comedy. So in what way would you, you qualify that then? Well, sort one of... thing I would like to do is I'd like to kind of recognise people that aren't TV stars because I think mm. TV stars have already got recognition. Just yeah. the fact that you're on telly... Um, is recognition enough? There's a lot of comedians slogging around the circuit that never get their gob on telly, mm. and some of them are so brilliant and unique and unpredictable and just really funny people yeah. that I think they deserve to be recognised, really. Your first nomination, Jerry Sadovitz. Indeed. Shall we see a bit of uh, Jerry Sadovitz? Yes, so, why yeah. not? Yeah. <laughs> Jerry Sadowitz and his close-up magic. I'll give you Jerry Sadowitz and his close-up magic. <laughs> OK, this is it, folks. The classic live dove from the bowl of hat illusion. No problem to Alex, like, Sammy. <laughs> Dear big-nosed Jewish bastard, you have pulled me out of the hat for the last time. The only reason why you pull doves out of hats is because you can't pull proper birds from a disco. <laughs> Fuck off! <laughs> That's not true, by the way. Yes, it is, and don't tell me to fuck off. <laughs> now, uh, a brilliant live comic, very uncompromising, quite sort of, you know, con confrontational, you know, in the way that I suppose Frankie Boyle's, you know, reputation now has. He's carved out as this sort of comic who's, you know, uncompromising, says the unsayable. I, I think this sort of sums him up. He just didn't really care, you know, and I, I did um, the Montreal Comedy Festival with him. Yeah. And um, he, he walked on stage to do his kind of five minutes at the sort of gala performance, which is about three or four thousand people. And his opening line to a load of French Canadians was, good evening, moose fuckers. <laughs> and um, <laughs> someone got up from the back of the audience, walked very slowly down the steps, up onto the stage, and chinned him. Chinned him. <laughs> I went and saw a comment, I can't remember who it was, it was at Leighton Live in Edinburgh. It was a guy, he came on stage and he said something like, um, I need a volunteer from the audience, right? And he was doing some sort of magic or some silly bit of physical business. And the audience weren't having it. And he went, I want a volunteer from the audience. And some bloke got out of the audience and knocked him out. <laughs> Spark out. <laughs> And he went, <laughs> went down like that. And then a few minutes ticked by, and he sort of came round, and he got up, and brilliant presence of mind, he went, not you. <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Your next uh, nomination is Malcolm Hardy. I think another unsung hero of the circuit, again, would do anything to get a laugh. This is Malcolm Hardy, here we are. <laughs> We went into pubs and, and we started tap dancing with... <laughs> thank you. We started tap dancing with dustbin lids on our feet. And they love that as well. Which only goes to show that the general public will accept anything. He never missed an opportunity to get his bollocks out. Did he, really? he didn't, no, no. Any opportunity. And he... fair enough, my favourite thing he did with his bollocks was he put a pair of glasses on the top of them and that was his impression of General de Gaulle. Yeah. <laughs> and it really looked like it him. It did really look like him. <laughs> my favourite ever Malcolm story was, and I think a lot of comics would really appreciate this, he was up in Edinburgh one year, he'd had a really bad review a few years before, and you always remember who those people oh, yeah. are. You can't help it. It's seared on your brain, isn't it? And you wait for the opportunity. Yeah. And the opportunity came to Malcolm. He saw this critic sitting in the audience some years later, said, I need a volunteer for a trick. Said to this guy, can you come and help me? Guy stood in front of me, said, can you hold this plank of wood for me? So the guy held the plank of wood, Malcolm kicked him in the bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> that is brilliant justice. Genius. Yeah. <laughs> 
And of course, sadly, he's no longer with us. He drowned a few years ago in the Thames, and I, I just think there's a big Malcolm-shaped hole there in is. the world of comedy. I really do. Yeah. I mean, we went to the, the funeral. The funeral was an extraordinary occasion. There was always seven, eight hundred people there, all comics in the audience, mm. and also the kind of the black humour of the fact he drowned tragically in the Thames, and on top of the coffin was a life belt. <laughs> <laughs> So your final nomination is Hattie Hayridge. Well, again, Hattie Hayridge is someone who... She has been on telly, but okay. in my book, not enough. And she was one of those women that was around at the beginning of sort of what you would call alternative yeah. comedy, I suppose, kind of in the, in the mid-'80s. In the winter when we had that hurricane, I was standing at a bus stop, and all of a sudden this bus shelter blew straight past me. Then three all came round the corner straight after each other. <laughs> I never played with anybody when I was little, not even myself. <laughs> I was so lonely, I invented six imaginary brothers and sisters. Hated them. She's <laughs> 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 so, uh, so great, had a great style. Hattie was just so different from everybody else. She just had perfectly constructed one-liners, which we, she would deliver in a kind of very deadpan way, and she had this gorgeous kind of sweet face, and I just thought her jokes were sort of so clever. So, I'm going to ask you for your, your, the winner for your outstanding contribution to comedy. I think it's got to be Jerry, actually. Yeah, Jerry Thank Sadovitz. Here we go. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the classic yellow handkerchief up the arsehole illusion. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> yellow handkerchief goes up the arse. Just tuck in like that. You know, a lot of people actually think that uh, Paul Daniels is a wee baldy <laughs> but uh, I happen to know that some of this here is his own. <laughs> <laughs> so, two blue handkerchiefs, ladies and gentlemen, tied together in a little knot. <laughs> it's time for a quick joke, I think. What's the difference between Paul Daniels and a coat hanger? Well, a coat hanger has possible entertainment value. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. And ladies and gentlemen, the yellow handkerchief is not stained in any way at all. That's great. Thank you, Joe, for sharing your comics choice. Ladies and gentlemen, Joe Brand. <laughs> See you all tomorrow night. Good night. <laughs>